We're back with breaking news about a murder mystery involving those four Idaho college students. A year ago today, life changed on the University of Idaho campus. What was once a safe college community spiraled into chaos. It was just a shocking crime for all of us. Four students brutally murdered in a home just off campus, and Moscow was at the center of a media firestorm. Today is the one-year mark of what happened on King Road, and we wanted to know how the University of Idaho is working on the continued healing of vandal students and staff. We went to Moscow to find out. We're back with breaking news about a murder mystery involving those four Idaho college students. We know you have questions, and so do we. The university's dean of students responding to those ongoing fears. It's scary uh, what's happened. Take me back and tell me what you went through in those first days. <sighs> those first days are really a blur. We were responding, we were all devastated, we were all in shock. Blaine Eccles is the Dean of Students at the University of Idaho. He still can't believe what happened a year ago. Four students brutally murdered in a home just off campus. Ethan Chapin, Zana Kernodal, Kaylee Gonzalez and Madison Mogan. Four beautiful lives cut short. The media descended on the small college town. And this is the last thing you thought you'd have to deal with here at the U of I. Yeah, no one ever anticipates going through an experience like this at all. While police were investigating, Eccles says the U of I went into crisis mode. We had a, a job to do, um, which was responding for the needs of our students. We led with a student uh, first approach of safety and security and support. That made it very simple in my world from how our faculty responded and supported students who needed to go home at the, probably the darkest time in their life for the support and outreach that I've seen students show in, in, in care and support of one another to the beautiful outpouring of care and support for the families of these individuals that we've lost. After weeks of uncertainty and fear. Detectives arrested 28 year old Brian Christopher Koberger. Brian Koberger was arrested. He was booked into the Latah County Jail and there was a huge sigh of relief on campus. A year later, life goes on and the focus is now on healing. This was a site that a lot of students really like because it's kind of quiet here and it's peaceful. A major part of that healing is this open space on campus. I knew that we didn't have to create some sort of memorial to remember these four bright souls um, that we lost. And so we started and created a Vandal Healing Garden and Memorial. It's a quiet, secluded place nestled up against the trees. And we have our students in the College of Art and Architecture that are leading the way with what a design can look like for that. I'm really excited to see what the students are going to do with it. The Vandal Healing Garden and Memorial is still in the early phases, but donations are coming in. Today, we've raised over $200,000, $219,000 that will go towards the Vandal Healing Garden and Memorial. So we're always looking for uh, great donations and opportunities for folks to help us create a space where our, our Vandal family can come together and heal and grieve in support of one another. Thousands of those dollars raised by students. Remember these Vandal Strong bracelets with the name of the four victims? They were sold to support this memorial. Yeah, the bracelets, again, a student-led initiative, which they did phenomenal. They raised over, I think, $25,000. I'm actually wearing one of the bracelets right here. But Eccles acknowledges there is one thing that remains near campus, something that makes it hard to heal. And you can see it from almost every direction. The now boarded up King Road House, the scene of the crime. It is an impact on our students. You know, it's a constant daily reminder for them, and it, that's a hardship as well. Some of the families want it left alone until the trial is over. But at the beginning of this month, investigators once again visited the house. Since there's no date set for the Koberger trial, they wanted more time to examine the house and to build a model of it. We're evaluating as the situation goes and seeing what happens on the, the court side too. At the moment, there, there aren't any plans uh, uh, underway to do anything with the house. President Green is just being very sensitive to the, the needs and the concerns of the family, but we also have a responsibility to our community too. On the year anniversary, there will be a special student-led vigil at the U of I to remember these beloved vandals taken from this community. Only students are gonna be speaking at this vigil. It'll be at six o'clock on Monday, the 13th of November, and uh, it's gonna be open for anyone to uh, join and participate. 
a vigil to keep healing and keep moving forward one day at a time. A year later, Eccles says being a vandal means even more to him now. The one thing I think it's really done is solidify what it means to be a member of the Vandal family. We are there for one another. We care for one another. We support one another. Vandal strong. And that vigil is tonight at the University of Idaho. It's going to be at 7 p.m. Mountain, so that's 6 p.m. up in Moscow there on Pacific time. It's going to be on the administration lawn at the Moscow campus. The university is also asking vandals all around the country to turn on their porch lights in solidarity from 7 to 8 p.m. Again, that's mountain time. It'd be 6 o'clock Pacific. And coming up tonight at 10, I sit down with the parents of Kaylee Gonzalez at their home in Rathdrum, Idaho, to find out how they are doing a year later. When this is all said and done, if you remember these four kids, that's that's the end goal that we're all working towards. And we're going to forget whatever loser did this, whatever monster put this together, he's going to become uh, not the story. And the story will be... He'll be non-existent. Yeah, he, he won't even be around to uh, be remembered and everyone uh, else will be. The people that we have surrounding us, uh, lifting us up in prayer and lifting us up are amazing. Uh, and sharing this grief with us and, um, you know, sharing our, our tears and and the love for our girls. It's, um, we would have never thought that um, this, well, for one, would happen and that it would become so big and so important to so many and um, hurt so many. And, um, and we're just blessed to have everybody that, that we have. They are really just taking it one day at a time, still a year later, and their story is coming up tonight at 10, right here on Channel 7.